Welcome to Living with Grace. Um, having a small meal before I step out. But I tried to record on my other camera. I'm going to get better with the details and just getting straight to the point and not uh, being all over the place so that we can receive something together, right? Welcome to Living with Grace. My name is Anne. It means grace. And I believe that God loves us that much that we are covered under his grace, in his grace. And understanding what grace is, meaning living our everyday life sufficient enough that he knows why. He knows why. I wanted to talk to you briefly about respect and boundaries and actually applying it. I'm going to give you a quick scenario of what what happened in my life, because some things happen to bring certain things to life so that you can correct it so it doesn't reoccur, at least handle, know how to handle it if it does reoccur. So this is all about respect. This is about boundaries and understanding it and, and, and getting revelation of it as you get older in life and as you become seasoned, as life turns and we want better for ourselves because we welcome that. So if that's for you today on this video, continue watching. If not, watch some of my other videos and feel free to comment and subscribe and all that stuff as we go along. Because I know some of you guys are here because of my micro lock extensions, but we'll have a video on that sooner than later. Okay. So scenario. So this is what happened because I grew up not necessarily knowing what respect means in terms of respecting myself. Excuse me. And it was common for me. It was a familiar place. It's something that I did, others did. It was allowed. The more that I respect myself is the more that I don't tolerate certain things. I'm certain you can relate. So I'm going to give you the scenario. So I have goals and I have budget. I have a budget to attain these goals, realistic goals, right? Excuse the noise if you hear. And Doing that with other people around you, meaning family, loved ones around you, is a team effort, right? So what I did was I made a prepared dinner for, because I have my two eldest kids and I'm speaking to someone and they have a child as well. And so I was like, okay, I didn't get paid this day. I thought I was going to come through. So let me just garnish what I have and still fulfill the things that I need to fulfill financially. So I made two sets of pasta because I'm dealing with two young men and a big man and a child, Right. And so what I did was I created, uh, they like pasta, they like, you know, sp spaghetti, lasagna, all that stuff. So I, I made uh, fettuccine Alfredo and I made pasta. So two, two different pastas and they don't like chunks. And they were very finicky with what they eat, despite the situation, you know, but they, they're finicky. So then I was like, okay, so I made food enough. So knowing that I'm going to leave here, go here, I was like, okay, fine. So as I was watching, even before... Um, we were transporting ourselves to a different location. People were picky with the food. So I was like, okay. And I'm a person, I'm not offended. If you don't like it, I'll touch it up, fix it. But I'm not a chef, so I'm not going to beat up on myself, nor am I going to aim to please you all the utmost, like I'm, like it's a five-star meal. Like I'll try my best as I continue to learn. And that's something that is called growing together and understanding, right? It's not like I'm blocking off crying and saying, oh. So I was like, okay, seeing that it wasn't eaten in the evening, you know, morning comes, it wasn't used as lunch. So I was like, okay. I said to the person, I said, and thinking in my head, like some of that could have been left at home so that today would be fine for the, the young adults if they come home. Just giving you a scenario so you understand where I'm coming from. Because when you're having a dialogue with someone, they don't really understand where you're coming from. Uh, they take it the way that they want to. So I'm just going to say this. This is from my perspective. I cannot speak for anyone else, but I'm just speaking about what took place. Hopefully this mic is in. I was like, in the morning, I was like, okay, I'm going to eat some of what is here so we don't waste it. And then I go, because I, sh I should have packed less and left some at home because, you know what I'm saying, I don't want it to go to waste. I guess the way in which I said it, the person received it like I thought that didn't that they didn't like it because the person turned and said, did anyone tell you that they didn't like it? Did anyone say this now? I said, and that's like the aggression. So I came back with the aggression by, you know what? Nobody had to tell me that. I'm not concerned about that, but I'm saying that it couldn't, it, we don't want to waste it. I don't want to waste it. So if you're not going to eat it, I'll eat some of it now. And so it just got escalated where we're at each other's throats. So in conclusion, this is what happened. Regardless of who's right or wrong, is how you converse to one another, how you communicate, how you understand each other, how you can bring peace into the conversation and come to a consensus, right? Because not everybody agrees and two people will think differently. So he's barking at me, telling me that I'm so petty, I'm, I'm insecure, I'm worried. Like he didn't directly say I was worried about them not liking it, but he's thinking that I'm reacting that way because I'm thinking that they don't like the food. And I'm like, listen, listen, I, I, I have a budget. I'm trying to fulfill certain things. I don't know what track you're on, but I'm not trying to waste any food. Argument got really heavy where the person came into my face 
almost nose to nose into my face. I walked away, went to the bathroom. Person came and pushed the bathroom door open, said what they had to say. I was like, okay, regardless of us, who's right or wrong, not trying to prove anything, are we getting anywhere? And then it happened again where I was just like sitting on the, the bed and I was like, the person's in my face. I said, don't talk to me like that. Person came in my face again. I said, oh, I said, you know what? I don't, I don't want to be around you. I don't want to be here right now. And I said, and, and the person was justifying their actions. And I, I said to myself at that moment, I was like, oh my gosh, this has happened before. Oh, and no, 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 no. You know, cause I got to create my peace, even with my young adults, like certain things happen with them. And I was just like, no, I created my peace. I love Uno, but star, you know what I'm saying? So, so in this story, I'm not bashing anyone. This is how I'm perceiving it. Remember, I came from a history of abuse, people speaking to me a certain way, knocking me out, putting me in the hospital, all kinds of stuff, to a standard where I'm receiving God's love and understanding that, and I expect it from others, whether they let, they know how to do it or not. But if they don't, they're willing to learn, that's fine, because I'm, I'm expressing my boundaries. But if they're not willing to learn, then you cannot be around me, and I don't want you in my life, respectfully. You can still say hi and bye, but not at my inner circle, not at my table. So I said to the person, I'm not bashing these other people. They might've seen it a different way, but I'm just saying my tolerance and my respect and my boundaries, maintaining my peace. I said, you know what? Can you, can you just, I don't want to be around you. Go get my bike, put it outside of your vehicle and I'll, I'll get it. So he stepped out. I had a minute to breathe because it was just escalated so much that nobody's getting anything done or getting, you know, hearing anybody. I went out took my bike. He just walked away, didn't say nothing. I walked away. As I was riding away, because I rode quite a distance, I just started dialoguing with God and talking to God. And just, you know, because when things like this happens, sometimes we come to our own rationale, our own conclusion, and that's it. But for me, because I want to become a better person, a better mother, a better future wife, a better sister, a better daughter in Christ, first and foremost, I'm like, what am I supposed to take away from this? What am I supposed to learn from this? Excuse me. And so I cried. My tire got flat, don't know how, but it was quite a distance. And I started crying and I almost wanted to scream, but I said, God, please, like, cause I know you love me that much. And what came into my spirit was that whoever God sends to me because of my history and where I came from and how he delivered me and set me free, who he sends to me is going to nurture me, love me, teach me, console me and understand, not baby me, but be that God in my life, be that Jesus in my life, because he's seeking after God's face to be like him and to love me as I am a gift to him, Right. So I was like, wow, you know, because I could, I could have went to my old nature and said, okay, I deserve it. Okay. I was wrong. This not, which I was doing in the relationship somewhat, but I was just like, wait, how am I supposed to stand up for myself when I continuously, it's getting dark. That means it's going to rain. Hold on. Let me turn on the light. It's a warm light, but it will, it will work for now. So uh, I was just like, you know what? I want better for myself. And it's a decision we need to make for ourselves. We don't need anyone to give us a consent, have a consensus with, especially if it's a, a spousal or spouse or not spouse, potential spouse, friendship, or whatever the case may be. Because it's just like, we know what's good for us as we're growing, if we want to grow, right? So I was just like, no, this, this can't be from God. Like, God, you know, and, and it's not that I'm settling. It's just that, you know, you could be with someone and both of you guys grow at different paces, but you're still willing to grow together. And then there's some sort of understanding in that growth while you're doing life together. And I'm just like, are we doing this? Because maybe you're set in your ways. You, you want me to conform to your way, but it's not working for me, especially with the level of love that God has shown me and covered me in and, and just showered on me. I'm just like, no, I think I'm a little bit spoiled and I like being here. So I'm just like, no, no, no. So I made the, the, made up my mind by saying, you know what, despite of how he feels, because I'm sure he thinks he's right, because every argument we have is a right or wrong situation. It's not like a level of growth and, and holding yourself accountable and saying, you know, I did this wrong. I could have did this better. It's just he's right all the time. And I, I'm like, that's an endless battle for me. And I'm not trying to win anything. I'm trying to grow. Right. So I'm just using this example to say this. In conclusion, I was just like, it doesn't matter how much I love a person. It doesn't. I can love you from a distance. I do not have to be with you. And I found and I find that I have more peace with the decisions I'm making now, knowing that these decisions are, these, these decisions are from God because he has the best his best interest for me as his daughter in mind. And I need to live that here on earth as it is in heaven, which is where God is all everywhere. He's with me. So I'm like, I receive to be treated with respect. And if I'm saying, don't yell at my face, as I'm saying these things, you should understand that but at the same time, even if it does happen, because it could be emotions and stuff, the other person should 
respond by saying, oh my gosh, I'm sorry, or even go for a walk, come back and realize that. But if they're justifying that, the next level will probably be a choke push shove. I have been shoved by this person. I'm going to be honest and say that. But I'm just like the conversations and the communication that we're so common and familiar with, to me, I don't want anymore. So no fault of his. It's a choice of mine now. I'm just like, no. Right. So I just wanted to at least talk to you about that. Like if you recognize that form of disrespect, I would call it disrespect because when you know what respect is, you'll you'll you won't tolerate certain things. And it is called respect. Right. And when you respect yourself, you do demand, not demand, but you you respect yourself. People see that and they might implement it or uh, mimic it to respect you because they're, they're, they're learning through you or they already know, do you know what I'm saying? Or some people just don't know. And to me, I'm like, to have a relationship with someone, to have goals with them, to have a future with them and to build a legacy with them, a level of growth should be a willing factor from both parties, right? And also it, it helps when you're with someone that actually fears God and doesn't and, and takes the notion of themselves being God themselves and that they don't need to counsel with God or pray about anything, that the decisions are just concrete in their mind. And I'm just like, it makes it easier that way because when you think that you already have the answers, you don't need God. Yes, God's put place everything inside of us, but prayer, prayer is mandatory to commune with God. You know, Jesus is that middle component component and being and savior to allow us to talk to God. And if you're of a different religion, I understand. I'm not knocking. I'm just saying that you cannot live life on your own. And as you're seeking, whether it be, there's no right or wrong. There's a, there's a seeking, there's a searching and finding the right thing for yourself. And I'm not knocking anyone. You know what I'm saying? I believe I found it. And that's why I'm like, I have so much peace. I'm creating that peace and I'm doing what is needed to do here in my, in this life while I'm living and breathing until I pass in and see my savior, you know? So even in that, I just want to conclude by saying this respect, <laughs> respect starts by learning what respect is for yourself. You might not have learned it. You might not have seen it, but it's never too late to experience it. And it's refreshing. It brings so much peace. Anxiety is gone. Boundaries are, are, are lifted to a respectful level, a decent level. And you're able to communicate with confidence, knowing what you need for yourself with and being around others that understand that. Do you know what I'm saying? So yeah, I just needed to touch light on that because I find that everything that I go through and it's a, it's a level of learning the way that I learn it, that I like to share with you because it's like, you can learn it your own way and do the same thing. And the same thing will happen again with a different face, a di different situation, a different job, a different atmosphere. And to me, I'm like, if I'm going through this and this and this and that again, that means I haven't learned. So I want to be able to learn from what is going on. And sometimes it, and more times it takes a situation for you to open your eyes and say, okay, what's really happening here? What can I honestly learn from this? Not being defeated. And I'm glad that I learned how to deal with my emotions as well, because that crying I needed to do. And I cried out to God, opposed to just letting my emotions take, get the better of me and blinding myself from that, even from that lesson in that situation. And I'm so glad that I believe I came out on top. It had to happen. It's not necessarily that it came out on top. I, I, I overcame it with the way that God would deal with it because I, I did it the right way in regards to taking it for what it is, holding myself accountable, looking and assessing the situation, taking the time to go for a walk and commune with God and, and release my emotions so that I'm not answering based off of my emotions and my confusion and concluding it for myself. I don't need to call him and tell him, oh, you're wrong. This I don't need to do that. I don't need to call him and say this and that. Because remember, he thinks he's right in what he did. That's fine. And I will say this by ending this, this video. My right and wrong and his right and wrong is not right and wrong. It's an experience that we have to go through. And we experience that together, whether he takes it and leaves it or I take it and leave it. It's a choice. I cannot do it for him. He cannot do it for me. But I would say this. When you, are, when you find that partner, because some people don't want to let go of people, when you find that partner that's compatible with you, you'll know that that person's for you. And at, at that mature level, you'll also understand that everyone that you've been with was an experience. You cannot hold on to other people thinking that they're for you. The right person out there for you is there. They're there. So it's easy to let go of something that is not for you because it probably never was. You just have to go through an experience with them, you know? And that's why relationships are, very, are so important to understand and to grow from so that you can receive a good relationship and learn from the past relationship instead of being bitter and saying that it doesn't exist and then settling. It's our choice, right? Anyhow, thank you so much for your time. I still got to finish my meal and I got to head out and I'll see you in the next video. Mm-hmm.